WEEP has a new option for catchment hydrology. The MAVIA method is a daily simulation of transpiration, evaporation, irrigation requirements and scheduling, and crop growth and yields, and it includes modules for estimating reference evapotranspiration and soil water capacity. It was derived from the MAVIA suite of software tools developed at the Tunisian National Institute of Agronomy and has now been integrated into WEEP. This short presentation will demonstrate the highlights of this method. Let us add a catchment to this model. Call it agriculture. It will run off to the river and infiltrate to the groundwater node, including irrigated areas. Irrigation water will come from the groundwater, so the transmission link will bring the pumping from groundwater to the, the crops. WEEP is asking us to select the method <coughs> for calculating runoff and irrigation demands. We will cho choose MABIA, which is based on the FAO uh, drainage paper number 56, which includes a dual KC method for splitting evaporation and transpiration, and is a daily model. Even though the WEEP time step is not daily, in this case it would be monthly, the MABIA model will run on a daily time step, aggregating results up to the month. All of this is described in the help file. For more information and uh, to download standalone versions of the Mabia software, you can visit their website. So first let's split the agriculture catchment into the different crop types. So we'll choose eggplant for some of the crops, and the other will be cereals, uh, namely maize and millet. Specify the area in hectares, 100,000 total, and we'll subdivide uh, the crop's percent share. Eggplant will be 20%. And cereals will be 80 percent. Now we have to select the crops from the crop library. For this we'll use the crop scheduling wizard. So for eggplant we'll choose eggplant with a planting date of May or June. Season length is 140 days so if we start in June 10th uh, we'll end on October 27th. Save that. As you can see, we now have a crop library function that specifies the crop and the planting date. We'll do the same thing for the cereals. Here we have two crops, one of which is maize. I'll plant that in January, perhaps January 15th. And the second crop will be millet. planted uh, June 20th. WEEP comes with a built-in library of crop data for over 100 crops and land use types, some with multiple entries for different climates or regions of the world. These data are used to estimate evapotranspiration, irrigation requirements, and yields. You can edit this library or add to it. When we first go to the crop library, it shows us only the crops that we have in use eggplant, maize, and millet, along with a special crop named fallow, which is used to model the periods between crops. We can also view the entire crop library. It's organized by category, shows typical plant months, uh, different stage lengths for the crop, depletion factors, and so forth, all the parameters needed by the MABIA method. We can also search, say we can search by all the crops that are uh, specific to an arid region, or maybe just to see which beans are available. Uh, also, uh, there are links to some of the crops to the FAO uh, online tables uh, that have much information, crop description and climate, and so forth. You can also import or export uh, a subset of the crops to various files to trade back and forth from one wheat area to another. Next, we specify the soil water capacity. 
uh, th there are three different methods for specifying the, the water capacity. You can either enter the soil parameters directly, uh, if perhaps previous analysis has come up with the field capacity, wilt point, and saturation. Or you can uh, pull the texture class from the included soil library. WEEP comes with a built-in library of soil data for the 12 standard texture classes defined by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. You can edit this library or add to it. Here we see the 12 classes with notes for each. Finally, if you have soil survey data, you can use the Soil Profiles Wizard to read that in, uh, using one of several pedotransfer functions included uh, with the Mavia method. I happen to have soil survey data in a CSV file, so we can read that in. Soil survey.csv. Here you can see we have the profile number, the horizon, which is layer, the thickness of each horizon, uh, coarse fragments percentage, the clay, and the silt fractions. Read that in, uh, and then we will calculate the saturation, field capacity, wilt point, and available water capacity for each layer, and the weighted average across all. Uh, these values will be used in the MABIA calculations. And some data on effect effective precipitation. Uh, soil surface layer thickness for evaporation will leave at the default of 100 millimeters. Same with initial depletion. Uh, climate data. We'll read in climate data we have for precipitation in a CSV file. Here we see precipitation events. Uh, the MAVI method includes a method for calculating uh, reference evapotranspiration based on the penman monteith equation. We can either enter the data directly or have it be calculated. Uh, we'll choose the latter approach. So read in data on temperature. So we have minimum temperature and maximum temperature. We need to know the latitude, 30 degrees north altitude 100 meters. In this case we don't have any other data for wind speed, relative humidity, um, sunshine hours, cloudiness fraction, or solar radiation. So those will all be calculated for us by Mavia uh, based on some default values. Finally, uh, the irrigation schedule. So for the, the different crops we need to specify uh, what is the, the schedule of irrigation. So for that we'll use the irrigation scheduling wizard. Uh, crop season length, so different schedules can be, uh, can change the schedule throughout the season. Perhaps different crop growth stages require different irrigation te techniques, maybe more frequent watering in the earlier stages. Uh, in this case, we'll just have the entire crop season use the same approach, which is uh, trigger irrigation. You start, you irrigate on days in which uh, the percent of readily available water reaches 100%, and the amount you will water is 100% of the, the total depletion. By the same token for cereals, here we have two different crops, so we need to specify the schedules for both crops. Again, I will leave it at the default, but we could easily change it. Uh, fraction wetted by the irrigation, so 80%. The efficiency of the irrigation technology, perhaps say 60%. Uh, so if irrigation is not 100% efficient, we need to specify what fraction goes to groundwater, what's to run off, and the remainder goes to evaporation. So we'll say that half of the irrigation that inefficient goes to runoff, and the other half goes to evaporation. Finally, we can specify the yield, the potential yield of the different crops. For eggplant, uh, I think the yield is uh, 4 tons. 4,000 kilograms per hectare. For the cereals, we need to specify two values, so we'll have to use the wizard to enter multiple values. Uh, 8,000 kilograms for maize, for millet, it's 1,500 kilograms per hectare. Finally, for market price, the value, the market value of these different commodities, so $3.50 per kilogram for eggplant, and multiple prices for the maize, 
Uh, the maize is 35 cents. And the millet is 12 cents per kilogram. Given those values, let's look at the results. So now we will calculate the monthly time step, but within each month, the MABI method will calculate on a daily time step, aggregating its results for uh, irrigation demands monthly. Uh, the category of catchment results, there's a whole host of results. Uh, many different results are available. Uh, let's look at some of the key results. So area, this is just the percentage times the total area for 100,000 hectares. Look at the depletion in available water. So here we're looking at the eggplant. So the season starts in June, so before that it was fallow. Uh, then you start irrigating. To, the goal was not to go below this readily available moisture level, because below this there's crop stress, crop water stress is experienced. So as soon as the, the level of depletion represented by the red line gets down to the readily available moisture line, you use irrigation to bring it back up to the top. And at the end of the season, there's no more irrigation. If we look at the cereals branch, we can see two different crop within one year. Uh, the maize first, and then the millet, which looks like it has a deeper rooting depth. Same pattern. Uh, depletion, when it gets down to this one threshold, you irrigate to bring it back up to the top. Uh, the irrigation scheduling wizard can accommodate different uh, methods of irrigation. So we can not let it get so far down, or irrigate in a fixed pattern, fixed intervals, fixed depth, and so forth. To see the precipitation irrigation events, <coughs> the small red lines are precipitation, and the taller blue lines represent irrigation. So you can see the irrigation was very frequent at the beginning of a season. Uh, when there's shallow roots, it can dry out quickly, and then uh, less frequent, but but more irrigation in the middle part of the season. We can look at uh, yields for crops. So if we look at this across all crops, here we can see all three eggplant, maize, and millet. Uh, the maize has the greatest yield because they have the largest potential. And we can look at the market value for the different crops. Here, eggplant uh, is over half since it was such a valuable crop, even though it was only 20% of the area.